welcome to D-Lab Tech Tips. In this video, I'm going to feature another old AM broadcast radio. I had overwhelming response with the Aircastle, so this time we're going to do a Ward's Airline 1948 radio that came into the shop dead. Hey! What? I'm, I'm shooting a video here. What's up? Who's naughty, Betty? Uh, I don't know. I didn't order anything. Why? Well, who's naughty, Betty? Was it? It is addressed to me. I, I really don't know, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Naughty Betty? I guess we're going to have to open the box and find out. Guess so. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's what it is, guys. From Naughty Betty. And there's a little emblem there. I could be in trouble. Somebody just sent this to me. I did not know it was on the way, but I have my suspicions of who it is. One of you subscribers likes to send me wine stuff, right? Let's see if that's what it is. Let's hope that's what it is. <laughs> you better hope. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to make any comments, sweetie. <laughs> Here we are. Opening the box. Well, it's it's got some decorative uh, packing material. Kind of looks like uh, some of the things you have in your drawer, Marcia. Not. The upper left drawer. No not. Main. No one main. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Well, you're lucky. It's not that. It appears to be. Thank God, it's just some napkins that I can use under my wine glasses. If this was something else, you guys could have really had me. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? What do these things go well with? Crackers. Crackers. Well, so here they are for party time at D-Lab, which is every time I'm working on two radios. So I'm gonna take it and put it right here. And what goes well with that napkin? Gee, I wonder. Huh, what do we got for the wine there, Marsh? Oh, Noble Vines. Oh, all right, excellent. Year 181, I see. <laughs> it's probably a good year, huh? Huh. Huh. So here we go, let's work on that Wards. So here she is, a 1948 Wards. Deader in a doornail. Plug him in. Absolutely no signs of life. Luckily the dial cord is still intact because those aren't much fun to repair. But she is dead. So let's open it up and see why. I pulled the knobs off from the front. There's just a couple screws on the bottom. And the chassis comes right out. Once again, it's a hot chassis radio. There's no power transformer. So let's give her a quick look over. You see she's pretty clean. This is your built-in AM antenna. Here's your tuning. And it looks to me like somebody has replaced this dial cord in the past. Especially with this super stretched out spring. It's like they got a little short, but it's working fine. Let's take a look underside. Right, so I'm doing a little balancing act between the speaker and the antenna. Be careful if you do this because if you shove it you can actually break that fiber board here that the antenna's on. That'd be a real bummer. Here it is, bottom side. You can see she is full of all the original caps. I really don't see any signs of any maintenance in the past. And you can see a lot of these are ooey gooey rich and chewy. So they all got to come out. But we'll do that after we figure out why it's dead. So if you refer back to my last hot chassis radio that we troubleshot that was actually dead, it turned out that we had an open tube filament because all those tube filaments are in series with the 120 volt AC coming in. That's how those radios operate. So the first thing obviously you'd want to do is just take a continuity check across your line cord when you turn on your power switch, okay? See if the tubes are present. You can see there, we've got 174 ohms. So why aren't the tubes lighting up? So at this point, let's just disconnect it, plug it in. Ah, guess what? Now she's lighting up. I probably interrupted something when I took it out of the cabinet. But it is lighting up. Strange. So 
So that would get me to wonder if we just have a flaky power switch on the volume pot. Do we have any signs of life? Yep. Now all of a sudden it's working. Yeah, I touched it. That's the problem. All right, so I'm going to check the switch on the pot itself and let's see if it has some wavering resistance. So the meter's connected across the prongs of the AC cord. You can see we're open again. Let me turn this guy off. Back on. You can see that we have resistance again. But it's about uh, 100 ohms higher than what we had before. Interesting. So now I'm wondering if we have a flaky switch or if I have a bad power cord. So I've connected directly across the switch now. Let's see if I just move the probe. See how she's opening and closing. So we definitely have a bad switch on the back of the volume pot. Obviously when I'm moving this terminal it's making and breaking. So guess what? We get to change that pot. So here's where the challenge comes in. Where do you find a pot that has about a two inch long shaft that has the right splines so that you can put the original knob on there? That has always been a problem when it comes to vintage radio repair. So usually guys find hanger queens, say on eBay, and they get the part out and put it in the radio, but the problem is there, it costs you about as much to get that pot as it does to get the radio, right? Well, I happen to have a very nice vintage pot here. It has a good switch. It's a well-constructed pot and has a spline shaft, but unfortunately, it's like way too short, okay? So what do you do when you need to replace the pot you want that original shaft so you can put the knob on and make this thing look original. Well, let me show you a solution. So yes, I'm going to use this pot as the replacement for that pot. To get this shaft the proper dimension, I'm going to use one of these quarter inch couplers. Okay, You can find these in old radios too. Now what this does is it allows two quarter inch shafts to be joined and they got the set screws that hold them. You'll find these a lot in ham transmitters. I just happen to have a pile of them. So what I'm going to do is cut this shaft off of this pot and I'm going to cut this shaft off and I'm going to make sure the dimension between the two shafts equal the two inches. So this coupler will be in the middle somewhere. So the first step is to get a Dremel tool, chop that guy off. So for this operation, I am going to leave the pot installed. That way I don't have to take it out and put it in a vise. I already have the fixturing necessary right there. What I'm going to use is a Dremel tool with these cutoff wheels, okay? So one word of precaution when you're getting ready to use one of these guys is obviously if you're drinking some wine, there's going to be some dust flying around. So get your wine away from that because you really don't want to contaminate it. The other thing is, is sometimes if you're cutting and you get off at an angle, these blades will shatter and they'll throw particles all over the place. So wear some eye protection. When I was a kid, my dad was using one of these. The thing blew up and a triangle of one of these blades stuck right in his forehead. He walked up to me and said, hey man, look what I did. But luckily he had glasses on at the time. All right, so what I'm going to do to get a clean cut is I'm going to lay the Dremel right on my bench. I'm going to start it up and then feed it in and allow this table to stabilize it. That will reduce the chance of that blade breaking and maybe sticking it to my forehead. All right, I'm almost through. You can see all the brass dust flying off the shaft. You won't find pots made with brass shafts anymore. So pretty much... There she goes. So the pot's loose, but you can see there's all kinds of stuff behind it that will interfere. So I'm going to have to get in here and dig it all out. 
So before I take the old pot out, we're going to go ahead and get the new pot ready for installation. So obviously these two shafts have to equal two inches. So I'm going to cut this one off. We'll cut this one to where when I put the coupler, I can get between two and two and a quarter inches. And that will actually be adjustable. All right, so there's the new pot. With the shaft cut down. Put the coupler on there. Here is the new shaft from the other pot. So you can kind of slide these into place. And your dimension is just a little over two inches. Right on target. To make removal easy, I'm just going to get in here and cut these terminals off the pot. Then I'll swing the wires out of the way, get that one out. New pot's in place. Got the uh, shaft coupler on. The old spline shaft measures about two and a quarter inches. Should do a great job. Let's get it wired. I right, got the pot in. Got the knobs on there since it is a hot chassis radio. There's the old pot. We're going to bring her up on my Bariac. So we can watch the current, make sure I don't have any surprises. There's about 80 volts. Remember now, this has the old filter caps, so there may be some hum. Okay. She's a working. I'm at about. Right there is about 100 volts. So mission accomplished. I'm not going to leave it on long because of those old caps. I don't want to cause more problems. But the volume R&R was successful. So obviously the next thing to check is that the chassis will still go in. And we have plenty of clearance those knobs so we don't want that coupler to hit the wood cabinet chassis is fully seated the coupler is well behind where the knobs go on so there's absolutely no interference and you'd never know that it was replaced well that's a wrap on this tech tip from D Lab Electronics Yes, the radio needs much more work, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. This was to show you how to modify a volume pot to go in that old radio and keep that originality. Now, there's one other thing I need to cover real quick. I'd really like to thank my subscriber that sent these to me. They will be in the shop. You're going to see them in many future videos. I also received a notification from PayPal that somebody set me up for some automatic donations which is very cool I really appreciate it because everything I get people I put back into the shop I buy things to fix and demonstrate for you and then I send them down the road so keep an eye on D-Labs there's a lot more good things coming appreciate it, everybody see you again